Hi, in this video, we are going to talk about one of the questions of searching. So when we talk about searching, there, are, there is linear search, there is binary search. So in this question, we will see which particular search we have to do. And in case you already know binary search, then this question will be pretty easy for you. Plus this will give you a practice of binary search. And to some extent, we will see that how we can modify to some extent binary search to get our results. So we will do the drill. First, we'll try and understand the question. Then we will try and come up with the logic and then we'll just try and write the code. Okay, so let's just go ahead and try and understand the question first. So as you can see, this is transpoint question at mycode.repbytes.com. Okay, let's go ahead. So the question says, Tina is a computer scientist and a part of her work requires her to find the first occurrence of one in the array consisting of zero and one. So I'll just note down the important point. I'll just underline first occurrence of one in the array consisting of zero and one. One good news is that the array is sorted. Okay, good. Tina is sure that a sorted array will give solution to this problem in more efficient way. Can you write code to find first occurrence of one in the array consisting of zero and one? So as you can see, the problem statement is pretty much simple and very clear and very simple. It is written that you will have an array consisting of zero and one. The array is sorted, which means that all the zeros will come first and then we'll have all the ones. We have to find the first occurrence of one in the array. Let's just see the input, output and the test cases. So the input, in the input, the first line contains an integer t, which is number of test cases, then follow t test cases. Each test case consists of two lines. First line contains n, length of the array. Second line contains n space separated integers 0 and 1. In case of output, we have to print t lines, each containing index of first occurrence of 1, if it exists, else print minus 1. So it could be a case that we have a complete array of just zeros, there is no 1. In that case, we have to print minus 1. Now let's see the test cases. In this case, we have t as 2, which means we'll have two test cases. We have length as 5. We have five space separated integers. The first one occurs at index 2. And then we have 4. As the next test case, the length of next test case is 4. We have zeros, which means there is no 1. Hence, the output is minus 1. So I hope the problem statement is pretty much clear to you. And the constraints say that t will have value in this particular range. And n will have maximum value of 5 into 10 to the power 6. And as it's written that a of i could be either 0 or 1. So that's the test case. Let's just go ahead and see how we are going to solve this problem. Okay. So we have seen the problem statement. I have just written that down in one line. So you are given an assorted array of length n consisting of zeros and ones. You have to find the first occurrence of index of one, or you can say find first occurrence index of one. Okay. Now let's write it down. So let's say we have an array 0, 0, 1, 1, 1. Okay. So one obvious option that we have is that we go through each and every element of the array. And what we will do is we will just try and find out which is the first one, okay? So in that case, I'll just run a loop from i equal to zero to n minus one, and I'll check each and every element, which so every element is having value as one, the first element that is going to be my index. So that gives me a time complexity of O of n in worst case. When I say worst case, which means that let's say, what if one is there at the end of the array, or in, you know, let's say one is not at all there. In that case, you will have to go through the complete array. So your worst case time complexity will be O of n. So if you try and write this code, the code is fine. But when you will submit it, you will get time limit exceeded. So in such cases, when we get time limit exceeded, we have to reduce the time complexity. This is the time complexity. So as I said in the beginning only that if you are aware of binary search, then you will be able to solve this problem in O of log n. But for that, you have to be good with binary search, you have to understand what is binary search, you should be able to write code of binary search, okay? If you're still not clear with binary search, I'll just suggest go back and see the video of binary search, okay? Now let's say how do we implement binary search in this particular thing. So what we will do is we have to find the first occurrence of one, okay? So what we will do is we'll check the mid element, okay? So like we do in binary search, we keep on dividing the array into halves. So we'll check the mid element. So what are the se several situations? Number one situation is that mid element is one. Another situation is that mid element is zero. So in case mid element is one, there are again two situations. One situation, as you can see here, when I say mid, the mid will keep on changing in the program, okay? So as we keep on applying binary search, the mid will keep on changing. I'm just taking a generalized case, okay? 
So let's say we have 0, 0, 1, 1, 1. Another option that we have is 0, 1, 1, 1, 1. Okay. So in this case, this mid is actually the index that I am supposed to return. So what I'll do is, in case my mid element is 1, I'll check that if mid minus 1 is 0. That means that this is the first occurrence of 1. I'll repeat, whenever I get 1, I'll check that if previous element is 0. In that case, this is my answer, I'll return the mid. Else, what will happen is that in this particular case, we know that all the elements after here as, are just going to be 1, which means that they are not going to give me the first index. First index of 1 lies somewhere in this particular half. So what I'll do is, I'll apply my binary search to this particular half. So I'm talking about that if mid is 1. So these are two test cases. Let's say mid element is 0. So let's say we have 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. Okay, so let's say this is my case. In this case, let's say first this is the mid element. In this case, what will happen is that there is no chance since this array is sorted that one will occur somewhere in this particular area of this array, right? So what we will have to do is we'll have to start searching in this particular area. And this is something that we have to keep on doing. We'll have to keep on updating. So now this becomes our new array in which we have to find for the first occurrence of one. Okay, so this is what we do in case of binary search. We keep on dividing the array into halves. We just reject the half that we think is not going to give me the answer. And we just pick up the half that we think is going to give me the answer. Accordingly, we just update our start end and made accordingly okay so i'll just repeat that if you are not clear with binary search just go ahead and watch the video of binary search first and then come back to this particular video okay so now we have come up with the approach to some extent we will find mid okay and mid is going to be start plus end by two okay so what will happen is that start will always be the start of the array starting index of the array or the sub part of the array that we're talking about and end is going to be the last one so in this case initially my start will be zero and end will be four but as we divide our array then my start becomes zero one two three and my end becomes four and then accordingly we'll have our start plus end and one more thing i would like to tell you is that it's always better to keep calculation of mid as start plus end minus start by two because this to some extent ignores the integer overflow okay so again we have explained this while talking about binary search so make sure you watch that as well okay we'll proceed further so we'll calculate mid we'll check that if mid is equal to oh sorry if a of mid let's say a is the array is equal to equal to one if it is equal to one we will check that if r of mid minus one is zero or not before that there is another situation or there is another condition that we need to keep in mind what if the array is something like this okay in that case what will happen or let's say is that in this case what will happen is that we will come to a place where our mid becomes zero and this one we come to this particular place in this case if we check that r of mid minus one sorry should equal to equal to zero should be equal to zero if we check this condition we will get runtime exception because this is you know we are trying to access a negative index okay so what we will do is that whenever we get a of mid equal to equal to one before we check this condition we will check the condition that mid should be equal to equal to zero or r of mid should be equal to zero so what happens in this case is we check if r of mid is equal to 1. Yes, it is 1. Then I check that whether it is at the leftmost element. So what happens is that this is or. You must know this in case you don't, no worries. So this is or. In this case, what happens is that if this becomes true, then we don't even evaluate this particular part. So this is how it happens that as soon as this becomes true, since in case of for, in case of or, what happens is that if any of the one is true, the answer is true so as soon as we get this element as true we don't even evaluate the compiler does not even evaluate so as soon as we get mid equal to equal to zero this does not get evaluated this will be mid minus one okay so what will happen is that we don't get the error that we were talking about here and in case mid is not equal to zero we check that r of mid minus one is equal to zero or not in case this is true this whole thing is true which means we are somewhere at this particular place and we will simply return our mid okay 
and if this is not the case let's say this condition is not true another condition we have is that if r of mid is equal to equal to 0 in that case we will make a recursive call if a of mid is equal to equal to 0 we'll do our searching in this case what will happen is that we are here at this particular place we have to search in second half so what we will do is we'll update our start to mid plus 1 and I'll update our end to as it is. Our end remains as it is. This is one situation. Another situation is that if mid, if you know, if we this situation is not true, this situation is not true, the only situation remaining is this, which means that we are somewhere in this kind of array. In that case, what we will do is we have to search in first half. So we update our end to mid minus one, and I'll start remains as it is. Okay. So now many questions will be coming in your mind that what is going to be the base, you know, base condition and what is this mead, how we are going to just pass start and end and how things are going to happen. So now again, I'm repeating, if you're clear with binary search, you know, these kind of questions might not be coming in your mind, you know, you might be somewhere clear with the code, but let's see if it is still coming, no problems. Let's just try and write down the code, okay? So first just let, write down a generalized code and then we'll write it in the corresponding language, okay? Okay, so we have seen till now the logic. I'll just repeat it once before we just go ahead and write the implementation thing completely. So what we will do is we'll have a mid, we'll check that if the mid is the right index, we'll simply return it. Else we'll make a decision based on certain situations that we have to search for the first index in first half of the array or the second half of the array. Let's just go ahead and write the code for this. Okay. So let's say the code is first index. Sorry. Let's say the function is first index. What are going to be the parameters? We have already seen that we are going to have an array. So one of the obvious parameter is the array. Okay. Another thing is start. End. Okay. So these are the things that I'm thinking will be useful right now. Okay. Now what is the base condition and what is the return type? So we will be returning the index. So the return type will be int. It will be the index. We'll check that if this is the base condition start is greater than end we simply return minus one so we have to return minus one if there is no zero if there is no one this is the case okay that we keep on searching and in this case if there is no one present then we eventually will come to a place where start where start becomes greater than end in that case we simply return minus one if that is not the case we will check if r of mid is equal to equal to 1 and mid is equal to equal to 0 or r of mid minus 1 is equal to 0. In this case, I will simply return the mid. Okay, fine. Another situation we have is that else if r of mid is equal to equal to 0. Okay, we haven't calculated the mid. I'm so sorry. So we will have our mid int mid is equal to start plus start sorry end minus start by 2. Okay, that is our mid. Okay, coming back, we check if r of mid is equal to equal to 0, which means that my first index of 1 is in the second half. So I'll simply call this first index again. I'll call first index. And I'll just go across, I'll pass the array, I'll pass the start. So in this case, the start will change. The start will become mid plus one and the end remains as it is. And if none of the condition is true, which means that let's say in this case, we are here and we have to make, do our searching in the first half. So we will simply return. We have to do return here. Okay. We will simply return first index r comma start comma mid minus one so in this case our end will get updated so that is the code so we have seen the code completely the only thing now we would the only thing that we need to do is that we just need to write in the corresponding language one thing you must see is that first we tried to come up with the logic we did some calculation part or you can say pen and paper part then we just wrote down the steps in english so that 
we are clear with what steps we have to do and you know just after that you can just go ahead and write the code in whichever language you want but we just add a intermediary step as well so in case you are not able to directly write the code in your uh, compiler from the steps that we did in that case just write this intermediate code just write the code on using pen and paper that's going to help you now let's just go ahead and write the code the time complexity for this code is going to be o of log n okay and in case you are doing the question of searching i'm assuming you must be clear with recursion till now and in case you aren't see what is the issue again dry run the code okay so let's just go ahead and write the code okay so till now we have seen how to come up with the logic how to use binary search and we have written the code pretty much now we'll just implement it fully in c++ and see if it is getting accepted okay so i've already taken t as input and we are for every test case we are taking n as input and we are having the array of size n and for n we are taking just we, here we are just taking input of the array 0 or 1 then we have a function called find 1 this is the recursive function that we are going to use and we will be returning this find 1 will be returning the index this is the index of the first occurrence of 1 and we will simply print that ok so let's just try and write this find 1 so as you can see the parameter that we are passing is this is the array this is the start so we'll first start with first index zeroth index of the array and go till n minus 1 we are having the complete array in which we are doing the search initially and then we'll keep on dividing the array so here we as a parameter we have a and then we have start and end the start and end will keep on changing according to the situation and then we have return type as end let's just go into writing the code so we start with writing the best base case we have if start is greater than end we simply return minus 1 which means there is no such one in the array if that is not the case we will calculate mid mid is equal to start plus end minus start by 2 this will give me the mid now what we'll do is we'll check if a of mid is equal to equal to 1 and mid is equal to 0 or a of mid minus 1 is equal to equal to 0 okay if this is the case which means this is the first index of the array in this case we will simply return the mid okay if this is not the case we will check else if a of mid is equal to equal to 0 if this is the 0 which means I have to continue my search in the second half okay if mid is 0 which means there is no 1 in first half we have to continue search in second half we will simply do return we will call the function find 1 we will have our a as as it is we'll, our start becomes mid plus 1 because we have to do the searching in second half okay and our end remains as it is okay and if both of these conditions are not true which means we have to do the searching in first half so we'll simply return find one a comma start comma mid minus one so this is going to be my code so as you can see that you I have done things step by step and as a result of which I, it didn't take me much time to write the final code okay so it's really important that if you keep your thought process very clear from the beginning it will be really helpful for you in writing the code now let's just see that whatever we have written is giving me the correct answer or not as you can see for this test case this is the index I'm getting the right answer for one I'm getting zero as the answer for one and zero we am getting minus one as the answer so I think my code is working fine let's just submit it and see how it is working So as you can see the answer got accepted so make sure you try the code on your own as well and as i said that this modified binary search is something that will help you in many questions so make sure you are good at it okay